let's talk about say let's talk about baby Stockholm. These these migrants are back on the barge. Um, this is uh, you know this is well going back today. More apparently going tomorrow. I mean, is this a good thing or is this still just let's face it a complete silly drop in the ocean, frankly, with the tens of thousands of migrants that we've got housed in hotels right now? I think it is still a good thing because it sends a very important signal of intent from the government and a very clear message to those who are choosing to put tens of thousands of pounds in the hands of smuggling gangs, which is if you come to this country, we're no longer going to put up with you going into three, four, five-star hotels, decimating the hospitality, retail and leisure uh, sector of our local communities, and that you will effectively, obviously, be kept on these barges, be kept in disused army barracks, and hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, when we win the court case in the Supreme Court, be starting to be deported to Rwanda, and I hope do deals with other safe third countries, because that will send the clearest signal of all that there is no point in trying to illegally enter our country. The trouble is, with the Bibi Stockholm and these RAF camps, you know, we're looking at, you know, 400, maybe a few, few thousand, maybe in the camps in total. This is still such a drop in the ocean. Even if we were send people to Rwanda, if that ever happens, we'd get that court ruling, what, November, December? I mean, then it'll be challenged again. You know, we're just going to carry on going around the houses on that one. We're still only looking at a maximum of a few thousand people. Realistic, there's going to be a few hundred if it's, it happens in the next year. Again, weighing that up against the number of people who arrive pretty much every day. We've had up to a thousand a day regularly through the summer um, and still hundreds coming every day now when the weather's good enough. This doesn't really touch the sides of the problem. Is it going to be enough as, of a deterrent? Given that these people are, look, they're not risking life and limb to flee a dangerous land at the point they get on a, 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 a dinghy in Calais but they are risking life and limb getting on an overcrowded dinghy with 40 people on, one that's supposed to have 10 people on, and going across one of the most you know, busiest shipping lanes in, in, the, in the world. When they're willing to take that sort of, I would say, insane risk, weighing up the odds of being sent to Rwanda or put on a barge instead of a hotel, I'm thinking they're thinking the odds are in their favour, and they'd be right to think that. Well, look, you are correct. I'm not going to deny the fact that the Bibi Stockholm, the disused army barracks is somehow going to be where we magically put everyone who's illegally entered the country to date so far. But I still do think it sends a very strong signal of intent of the government implementing the very laws that we're passing through the House, despite having Labour over 70 times oppose those at every opportunity. Sir Keir Starmer are now obviously promoting the idea of doing quota sharing schemes with the EU, talking about processing quicker, but not saying whether or not processing will lead to actually people being approved or not. So ultimately, he is a he's you know pro the smugglers in in essence with what he's promoting. Whereas you know, we're sending a very clear signal that, like you say, Julia, people are choosing unnecessarily to risk their lives. These are not refugees. These are economic migrants choosing to come here, and they have no right to choose to come here illegally. We have a perfectly uh, fine system where you can apply to come through. Uh, the points-based system that we oh. use in Australia. Again, as you know, Julia, I still think immigration numbers are still way too high, and I would like to see cuts to legal migration as much as illegal migration. That's, and that's so you're, backed up, that you're backed up by the polls on that, but you know as well as I do, there aren't actually legal routes for people to apply to coming from a lot of the countries where they are actually coming from. Although I'm still amazed by the huge numbers of people coming from Pakistan on the dinghy route, when you can quite clearly get to just buy a plane ticket from Pakistan and travel to this country. We have a huge Pakistani uh, heritage community in this country, so I find that quite extraordinary. That, that waves big flags to me about who those people are, certainly. Can I ask you about what the First Minister of Scotland had to say? Well, he had a tweet and other statements about uh, opening up a sort of a, a global refugee uh, help for um, people from Gaza and basically saying, look, you know, Scotland will take their share... Do you think the rest of the UK or even the people of Scotland want to do that? Do you think your your Stoke constituents would like to do that? Well, Julia, you know about Stoke constituents as well as I okay. do, because, of course, you've got a great husband, a fine <laughs> Stokey stock, who owns the stands and is proud of the local area. The First Minister of Scotland, First Minister of Scotland is wrong. We should not have a Homes for Gaza scheme at all. It would be a severe security risk, first of all, to this nation. The fact that Egypt and Jordan, for example, are so... Uh, not interested at the moment in letting people in. Yes, get aid in, but don't want people coming into their country because they cannot be assured of the type of individual, whether they are a terrorist sympathiser or a terrorist activist, who would enter their country and potentially undermine their own security. That would be the same risk that we would be putting our citizens under, putting even further pressure on the Jewish community who would feel even more unsafe. And, of course, only exacerbate the problem even further when it comes to 
this country looking like a soft touch when it comes to people obviously uh, uh, wanting to come here. Yeah. And I think it would send the wrong signal, particularly when we are trying to stop the boats. The voters, I think, would be very angry about it in places like Stoke on Trent, but just also across the country. Yeah, and indeed, it was very interesting back in 2015 when uh, people like you know, the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, opened, I mean, literally said, You're welcome here in Germany. A million people turned up. Only half of them actually ended up coming from Syria when we had the, the uh, attacks by Assad on his own people. Um, and there was so much criticism of then Prime Minister David Cameron for not opening uh, the gates wide and I think just 4,000 a year were allowed in over over a, a, a short period, I think 20,000 in total and and the, when the media went completely crazy about this Labour are very critical, some Tory backbenchers when they did the polling it was absolutely extraordinary how many of the British public did support that policy and some saying even fewer. The British public, whether it's legal or illegal migration whether it's refugees, unless there's a clear cause like say, Ukrainian people having been invaded by Russia. The British public have basically said, that's it now, we're done, no more. Why do you think the British government, though, the government that you, you, know, you support as a Tory MP, why do you think the government doesn't really get it? Because even when we have Suela Braverman saying, as the Home Secretary, who's been very sensible on a lot of this stuff and what she says, says, look, you know, we need to cut, you know, legal migration. And yes, last year was unusual. We had people from Hong Kong, from Ukraine. Uh, we had a lot of a burst of numbers of students coming post uh, the pandemic. And so it was an unusual year. But we are still far, far, far ahead of where the British public is in terms of the numbers of people they want. Why won't the British government just simply say, especially with the power of visas that they have, we don't want an awful lot of these people in this country. They are not bringing added value. Well, first of all, I think the Prime Minister is doing the right thing by focusing on illegal migration. That is, of course, the biggest risk at this moment in time to national security and is also to overwhelming our public health service, our school systems, our communities, to be quite frank, with the hotels that are being taken up at huge expense to the British taxpayer. But look, Julia, you'll be aware the new Conservatives, which I'm proud to be a member of, released a 12-point plan on how to bring legal migration at least back down to 2019 levels. But of course, we need to go further. And I totally agree with you that the public have. They won't accept even 200, 300,000 net migration. They do want to see the tens of thousands. Some may say they want to see net zero migration. Who knows? But I would say that we need to ultimately make sure we get to a point where we're actually skilling up our workforce so they can fill the skills vacancy. We need to actually push back on big business who always want to pull the lever of mass migration to mm. fill shortages because ultimately they want cheap foreign labour yeah, exactly. uh, to enable to make bigger profits. And we need to be, just as you say, more honest about the fact that if we carry on with the unsustainable levels of migration, we'll have to build not 300,000 homes a year, 600,000 homes a year. 7 million brand new GP registrations were because of immigration since 2010. This is an unsustainable pressure on our welfare system, on our health service, on our school places, uh, for many people who struggle to get their first or second choice in some communities. Enough is enough. This country is a kind, open, welcoming country. We've had over 500,000 refugees and asylum seekers since 2015. We are willing to trade and work with the rest of the world. But when you see other countries in Europe willing to take very firm stances, such as France even, who have said that if you don't speak the language within maybe two years, then you could have your visa immediately yeah, revoked. Except they don't, they don't actually example. remove those people. And as you say, you talk about building houses. You don't even build the houses you said you build, which isn't enough anyway for the number of people who are already here, let alone the people we're going to bring in here under legal visas in control of the government. You need to have a word with the people in charge, Jonathan. Julia, I'm always happy to have your backing and I will make it clear to the Prime Minister that Julia Hyde Brewers demands I come in for a meeting in 10 Downing Street <laughs> oh, to have my voice heard. Let's do that. Let's do We will totally make that happen. I will, we'll message him now. Uh, when, he's been, when he gets back from the Middle East, he's got some other things on his plate right now. Jonathan yeah. Gullis, always good to talk to you. Conservative Thank you, Jonathan Julia. Gullis. Thank you very much, dude.